Hey there, it's Ben here. In this video, we're gonna have a look at how we animate type with keyframes. Now, there's lots of different ways of animating type in Final Cut Pro. Um, you can use some plugins for it. Um, we're just gonna focus on the very basic use of keyframes for animating type, which can be useful in uh, some situations. So we're gonna come up to our type and generators up on the top left here. And we are gonna dive into our titles. And what we're looking for here is the bumper and opener option. And we're looking for the basic title. So this is just kind of a stripped down version, your very kind of basic uh, title. And we'll drag that down to the timeline. And I'm just going to trim this down so it's just the length of this short clip that I've got on. So I've got my text right in the middle of my video here. I'm just going to drag this down so it's over the top of the sand at the bottom here. So it's going to have a nice contrast, the white text on the sand background here and we're going to jump up to our inspector on the top right now if you don't see the inspector don't worry just go to window show in workspace and then check the inspector now if you're seeing a completely different screen layout to me then you can also go to window workspaces and set the default layout and that's basically going to reset your kind of layout of everything so when we now reselect the text here you'll see we'll get that inspector up at the top right as well so we're going to type in a short title for this clip, Storm Day at Chesterman Beach. So once I've got my text all set up, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to select from my 2D styles. I'm going to choose the paper option and we're just going to drag it down just a little bit more. And then we're going to set up our keyframe. So I'm going to come to the beginning of my clip and I'm just going to play this on and I'm going to imagine where I want this text to finish animating. So that's where I'm going to set my first keyframe. So it's somewhere around about here is where I want my animation to be finished. So I'm going to come up to my inspector again, and this time moving away from the text inspector, I'm going to come to the video inspector, which is going to show me the options for the position, which is what we're going to keyframe here. And we're going to add a keyframe for the position here, and then I'm going to play this through. And I'm just looking at how quickly I could read that title to about there and I'm going to add a second keyframe. So we haven't done any moving of things yet, but here's what we've done. We've basically set up the keyframes where the animation is going to finish and then at the end where it's going to hold until before we animate it off. So I'm going to right click or control and click on my layer here, my text layer, show the video animation. And you can see here, basically we've got these two keyframes and in between these two keyframes is where we're holding the text in the position that we want people to read it. So I'm going to come back to the beginning and I'll just play back a little bit. And I want my animation to be reasonably nice and quick. And so once I've got this uh, few frames before where I want my text to be, I'm gonna to come to the transform options. So it's these transform options that we're using to move our clips around and for all the keyframing and everything like that. And then I'm gonna drag this off to the left. So basically, when this animates on now, if we move back, we'll play this through. text is going to animate on. So if we come to the end here, we're going to get this to animate off. So again, I'm going to imagine where I want that animation to finish. And here we're going to drag it off to the right. So we'll just keep dragging it until it's off the screen. And so now when we play this through, we have this animation coming on, it holds, and then it animates off. Now if we wanted to change any of that, change maybe the location of where it's animating from and to, then we would want to make sure that we come to the exact keyframes that we're working with in our animation. There's a couple of different ways of making sure that you're in exactly the right spot in your video. So up in the inspector, you can see all these keyframes are highlighted yellow. So there's a keyframe on that, which means I'm actually right on the keyframe. If I come back one frame, you'll see that keyframe section here on the right of transform is not highlighted. So basically, when you don't see those yellow buttons, it means you're on a frame that doesn't have any keyframes. So if we did a move on this frame, we would kind of make a, a weird jump with our animation. So we want to make sure we're moving between those keyframes. And we can also do that using these little arrows for next keyframe and previous keyframe. So you can see up here on the top right, I'm doing that in the transform options, but it's changing the location on the timeline as well. So we're on the very first keyframe here, and instead of this animating from the left to the center, I'm gonna get it to animate up. So we're just gonna move this, and we'll just have this sit right in the center. So now I change that start position, and you can see it animates quite nicely on there. So we could do the same at the end here. So if we use our navigation buttons, we can see we're on that keyframe. So now here with this, 
one here. We'll do the same. We will animate it off and it's going to go down. So basically it's going to drop down. So that's quite a cool way of animating those different bits of text. There's a few other things we can do here as well. We have our title set up. And so one thing we could do is maybe break it up a little bit. So if we just close this video animation section for a second, I am going to come to the middle here and we're going to have Storm Day and then at Chessman Beach as two separate animations. So I could go and kind of retype everything here, but actually it's a little bit easier to type everything as one sentence. Um, everything's nice and typeset there. And then we're just going to do a bit of cropping. So basically I'm going to take this layer and duplicate it up. So I'm holding down the Alt or the Option key. And then we're going to basically disable that. I'm going to highlight that layer below. And we will come up to our video options again. And I'm going to crop this from the right. So basically it's going to take away all that second part of the line. So the at Chestman Beach part. And then I'll come to my other layer. I'm going to kind of do the reverse of this. So I've disabled my background layer just by tapping the V key. And we can crop from the left here. So we'll get rid of Storm Day. So when we turn both these layers on, we have them both on screen, kind of perfectly typeset as they were before. So now if we come back here, you can see they're still animating kind of perfectly in sync but we can offset that. So I'm just going to right click on my top clip here and show my video animation. And then I'm just going to click on the first keyframe and the second keyframe, and we will just move those back a bit. So now what we'll see is they're offset. So basically if we right click on the bottom layer, that split that we've done has allowed us to animate these on at different points in time and the animation feels a bit slow at this point in time so I'm going to move these keyframes close to each other and we'll see if we can get that to be a bit snappier. That's nice. So basically we can really play around with the location of our animation so where it's starting and then also we can do that kind of offsetting um, with this cropping as well as a kind of nice mix. Now, there's lots of different ways of animating as I mentioned this is one approach to it I quite like it because keyframing is useful in lots of other different scenarios. So getting used to it with some basic text animation can really help you um, in other ways of editing. But definitely go and have a look at some other ways of animating type. You can also use movement transitions to animate type as well. But this is a, a method that I like to use from time to time. So let's just change this up a bit. So we're on our video animation for the top layer, which is the second part of the line. I'm just going to move this back up. And actually at this point uh, for the animation, I'm going to send this all the way across to the right here. So we're going to get something different happening. So basically we'll get that animate up from the bottom and then across from the right. So let's just stretch that out a bit. So you can create these kind of nice type animations where you have text flying in from different uh, directions. And as I said, there's a lot of different ways of kind of approaching this type of animation, but the keyframes is nice and easy to kind of wrap your head around. One thing I would mention here is that all the animation that is happening here kind of has an ease in or an ease out. You might want to, at some points in time, just right click on the keyframe in the viewer, make sure you're on it. So I'm on this top layers keyframe and change it to linear. And that just stops the deceleration um, for some of those keyframes when you're having them move in and off the screen. If we have parts of the animation that are off the screen, then we can zoom out here to catch the middle of that. So if we right click here and change that to linear, you can see now it's just a nice smooth straight line. We could even just move that up so it's snapping in the right spot. So you can see the storm day kind of slows down, but the at Chessman Beach is a kind of nice linear animation. And then when we come to the end, they both move off almost together. I think our keyframes here are just a little bit off now, but we can uh, maybe fix that by changing up the animation. So I'm going to get these instead of going down, we'll get them to fly all the way to the right. And for this bottom clip, I'll select that and I'm going to get this to fly all the way to the left. Okay, and we might speed these up a little bit. 
Okay, so you can still got a lot of flexibility with those keyframes. Quick introduction to how to keyframe type animations on screen. Uh, one other thing that's really useful as well is if we are kind of laying type over an image and it doesn't have a nice contrast like this, so maybe we had a text over a white part of the image, then we can come into our color correction and in the exposure, we can quickly kind of mute that image in the background just by having this sort of configuration. So you can see here, I'm basically squashing down the, the blacks and the whites and kind of getting a bit more contrast between the foreground and background uh, there. So you can see we can increase the contrast with the type and those layers by doing that. And we can also use uh, something like a shape mask for those layers. So basically the shape mask, I need to turn my motion properties off, will allow me to fade, I'm just doing this quickly as an example, and kind of darken the bottom of that image so we get more contrast, but keep the top of the image nice and bright like the original. So we'll zoom to fit, we'll play this through, nice contrasty text, surfer walks across, actually I stopped the video, but he just goes there and then turns around. <laughs> he uh, decides that the surf is not for him. This is a big storm day at Chessman Beach, and not many surfers are in the water. Okay, so I hope that's useful. If you have any questions about keyframing text, then do leave a message below. Um, I would definitely say that this configuration of having these four keyframes is quite normal for editing dips in sound, for editing kind of any animation you'll normally have two keyframes that hold that kind of central position. So that would be these two keyframes, and then these keyframes at the end that allow you to animate on or off um, from a different kind of location. As I said, if you have any questions, drop a message below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.